Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. I went where the feelings were, so I love jazz music. I love Fats Domino, not only for his songs, but his persona was one of joyousness, friendliness. He was a great man, and he died. I was just reading about him. In 1986, uh, Fats Domino was one of the first musicians to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, that strikes a chord. Here's something interesting. In the 1980s, Fats Domino decided he would no longer leave New Orleans because he lived in a beautiful big home in an actual poor neighborhood. He lived in a mansion. And he had enough money from his royalties. He hated touring, and he claimed he could not get any food that he liked anywhere else. <laughs> I love that one. He's my kind of guy. An invitation from the White House persuaded him to make an exception to this policy of not traveling. Now, what's interesting is that um, in 1998, President Bill Clinton awarded Fats Domino the National Medal of Arts. That's a beautiful award. I only hope that one day I will be honored with a National Medal of some kind for all the great work I've done. But I'm not holding my breath. Given the politics of the time, I doubt that that will happen. And what will it do for me at the end of the day? It's be another thing to throw into the archives. Now, I don't want to focus too much on the negative, meaning he died, and it's sad. He was a great man. He led a good life. He lived in a beautiful home. He had lots of children. What's this? Domino with the National Medal of Arts replaced by George W. Bush. Oh, after the original medal awarded to him by Clinton was lost in the floodwaters of Hurricane Katrina. That's interesting. I remember seeing him at the um, theater up in Harlem during a uh, Alan Freed rock and roll show. I'll tell that story for one more minute before I get into the news and views and reviews that I know you want to hear. So Fats Domino died October 24th, 2017. He was 89 years old. And I remember seeing him at the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame up in the Apollo Theater in Harlem. Now, i gotta, I got to tell you this. We're talking 1950s, mid-50s. We're talking white kids who took three trains to get to that theater. We're talking an auditorium filled with white kids and black kids. No one punched anyone. No one stabbed anyone. No one cursed anyone. All we did was sing and dance in the aisles during that rock and roll show. Look how far America has fallen as a result of the hippie 60s. Look at what hatred has emerged in this country as a result of the white communists who have stirred up hatred in this nation. Anyway, that's the opening to my show. Let's have another Fats Domino song, then I'll get into the topics that I want to cover today. Well, I just covered one of them. And Louisiana Creole French was his first language. I don't know if you know that. And his father was a well-known violinist. This is an amazing story to, to see how this man, who you think is just a rock and roll singer who doesn't know music, it was in his genes. Anyway, goodbye, Fats. We'll remember you. And now I want to talk about something not quite as pleasant. I want to talk about liberal Jews and Nazis, how Harvey Weinstein, Larry David, and Bernie Madoff destroyed the image of the Jewish people. I'm also going to talk about how, if you are Italian, of Italian heritage, African-American heritage, Irish heritage, I'm going to ask you, which amongst you today embarrasses you the most? We know that the Italian people hated the Soprano show because it stereotyped Italians as all being in criminality or in gangs, somehow tied into the to the uh, mafia. And most Italians hated that show. The only people who liked The Sopranos were non-Italians, by and large, who loved it because it stereotyped Italians, just as uh, Larry David does, and he stereotypes the worst of the Jews. We're also going to talk about white the white privilege hoax and the death of learning in the universities of today. And if that's not enough for you, I'm going to give you a little background on nutritional therapies for various and assorted problems such as schizophrenia, anxiety, and things of that nature from the greats in the field, something you may not know about. So I'm going to give you your money's worth, in other words. 
you pay nothing to listen, so I'm going to give you nothing. But the fact of the matter is you pay something because you're, the, you're investing your time in listening to this show. And I remember that every day. Every, every city, every big city has 70 or some odd radio stations. Every imaginable radio station playing everything you can imagine from music, sports, entertainment, talk. And then you have the Internet now. The, the phenomenal competition is overwhelming. So if you invest 15 minutes in my show, I'm going to give you 15 minutes worthy of your time. So what triggered my monologue today that liberal on, on liberal Jews and Nazis, how Harvey Weinstein, Larry David, and Bernie Madoff destroyed the image of the Jewish people? Well, I'll tell you what did it. I was watching HBO last night, and I pur purposely did not want to watch Larry David's replay, his new series, because I, I, I don't like his stereotype, but... I was scanning through it. It was the last 10 minutes of his latest one. I was so appalled I couldn't sleep. And so I thought I should write this today and maybe vent for myself and vent for others. So here it goes. The current crop of Jewish people are unfortunately typified by the above three. Try to name a prominent person of the Jewish faith who is a positive role model in the United States and the world. Can you name one? Where is the Albert Einstein or Jonas Salk of our time? New lows are hit on a daily basis. It was bad enough that Woody Allen single-handedly debased the image of the Jewish male forever by playing up the Yiddish stereotype of the Shlemiel and made a fortune laughing all the way to the bank. You see, Woody Allen created the image of the weak, servile, cowardly Jew to get where he is. And now we come to the special case of Larry David. On a recent episode of his revitalized series, HBO hit a new low in anti-Semitism by airing this insanity. In this episode, the scene is set at a Jewish funeral for a boy who died in an accident. The Larry David character fights with the usher over a seat, pushes his way through the mourners to get a better seat, tells the grieving mother to shut up and stop crying, and tops it all off when an Arab arrives to join the mourners. David starts screaming, gun, gun, he's got a gun! And the entire congregation is seen trampling on each other to run out of the synagogue in cowardice, fear, and terror. Now what does such, quote, comedy serve but to ignite the ugliest stereotypes of Jews. Is there no bottom to what low-grade comedians will do to bank a few dollars? Is this not a stereotype unto itself? All this is doing is stirring up negative images of Jewish people, period. No, there shouldn't be a law to prevent this kind of racism, but there should be some kind of self-constraint on the type of lowlifes that create this product. In a past generation, blacks were portrayed as servile and foolish in the character known as Step and Fetch It. In the 1940s, the Step and Fetch It character was the type who always said, Yes, sir, and made white audiences laugh hysterically because he portrayed the black male in the way white audiences wanted to see black males, which was servile and stupid. Sort of all of them were Pullman Porters. When was the last time you've seen a black character doing that? You would never see a black character putting down blacks, would you? Not only would such a character never be aired by the major media, not only would no one in Hollywood ever fund such a character, but I don't think such a character even exists in the African-American community. And yet Hollywood and HBO rush to fund the ugly stereotype created by Larry David. As far as Harvey Weinstein goes... I'm sad to tell you that there were Nazi posters and films created by the propagandista, propaganda minister Goebbels, which portrayed Jews in the manner of a Harvey Weinstein. They looked like him. It is hard to believe that a living embodiment of these Nazi posters has now appeared in our time. I can only conclude by asking, where are the positive Jewish role models today? Can you name one? And the same thing now applies to Italians blacks, and Irish. Who embarrasses you amongst your people? This is the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-400-7282. MichaelSavage.com is the website. No, I will not be talking about the dossier. That's Radio 01, not even 101. But to just read the Drudge Report and give you a story you can read yourself, we know the Democrats created dirty stuff about Trump that was a lie. I said it to you when it came out. I said, on the face of it, Trump wouldn't do a thing like this. Of course it was created as a smear tactic. What else is new? The Democrats are the communists of our time. This is what they do.
And what are the consequences going to be? A rash? Hillary Clinton's going to break out in a headache, flushing, abnormal vision, nasal congestion, back pain, muscular pain, nausea, dizziness, rash, or diarrhea because she's been exposed for what she is? No. That's why I'm not covering the dossier. I'll leave it to others to do that. Instead, I want to cover topics that are important to me. And this one is important to me. Liberal Jews and Nazis. How Harvey Weinstein, Larry David, and Bernie Madoff destroyed the image of the Jewish people, comma, in my opinion. Again, we're going to talk about the white privilege hoax and the death of learning. Incidentally, on that issue of white privilege, which I covered yesterday, there's a math education professor at a so-called university who says that there is no such thing as objective knowledge. It's all what you feel. It's all subjective. And that teaching minorities who may fail in math, uh, let's say the Pythagorean theorem, things of that nature, is a racist trick to embarrass people of color and minorities. Why don't you tell that to people in Japan, China, and India? These nations seem to excel in mathematics and objective learning. As a matter of fact, they are all homogeneous in population by and large. They don't seem to need multiculturalism to study the Pythagorean theorem. And that's what I want to say at this time, and I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. We are talking here. We're talking here about how liberal Jews, uh, such as those I named, in my opinion, destroyed the image of the Jewish people. And which, amongst your particular race or such religion, if you want to put it that way, embarrass you? And also the white privilege hoax and the death of learning, as exemplified by that dodo bird who teaches, quote, math education and says that minorities should not be forced to learn logic, scientific method or in this case, the Pythagorean theorem, because it's a method of entrapping minorities into failure. I've never heard anything like this. So let's begin with some of the callers on the uh, program. WABC Charles Line 6, what's your topic? Hey, Dr. Savage, I can't believe I got on. I've spoken with you before, but you are a, you are a role model for us, for the members of the All right, I, I accept that. So other than me, who's the Jonas Salk of our generation? Yeah, well, unfortunately, we don't have one. But what I wanted to say about Larry David is, interestingly enough, uh, it was my theory all along that George Costanza, who played him in, uh, in, in Seinfeld for all these years, and I learned later that, yes, indeed, he was playing Larry David, was made in Italian, because Costanza was an Italian, so they could get away with all the Jewish stereotypes. But what Jew puts himself down like this and makes a fortune and is not called out on it? Well, you know, there's, there's a... a, a do, do, you understand, do you understand the devastation? Wait, wait, stop. Do you understand what Woody Allen did to the, to the Jewish male image? That Woody Allen single-handedly made, made most people in America and the world say, yeah, yeah, Jews are like that, they're all like that. When have you last seen a Jewish male portrayed... Uh, as, let's say, an Israeli war hero, tell me when, or an American war hero, like never? When have the vermin of Hollywood ever shown a Jewish male in any way other than a shlemiel, a shlemazel, a weakling, a coward, someone who puts himself down? Tell me when. I, I, don't, I don't recall. I don't recall. And, and, and along those lines, uh, years ago I was watching a, a cable... All right, let's move on. It's too much already. You're giving me too much Jewish stick already. I ask you a question. You're running a show. No, I understand. He could talk me into the, into the corner here. Uh, just what the Jewish people needed was uh, Harvey Weinstein to come along at this time. Perfect. Uh, and we needed Bernie Madoff even more. Even more important was Bernie Madoff. Every stereotype about a Jewish crook who robbed his own mother and every Jewish charity could get his stinking dirty hands on, just what the Jewish people ordered in this uh, incendiary time of ours. And then along comes Harvey Weinstein... In my estimation, the Nazi posters portrayed people who looked like Harvey Weinstein. If you did them, in you couldn't stereotype what the Nazis did. 
more particularly than with him. I don't understand how this happens. And now along comes Larry David. It wasn't bad enough that we lived through the previous incarnations of this show, but he has to revitalize it, and I told you, I'm just scanning by it, and here's a Jewish funeral turned into a mockery of every Jewish stereotype once again. And I got to tell you, the other characters are so bad. The one who played the wife, Cheryl, man, is she over the hill. Has she suffered in that marriage with that Kennedy guy? That's all I could think when I saw her face had changed completely. And then there's a, another character who plays a Jewish woman with a loud mouth. Every word out of her mouth is a filthy, dirty F word. That's humor today. No, it's humor only amongst people who wouldn't have even made it in the Borscht Belt. Because let me tell you something. In the Borscht Belt days of comedy, there was no dirty words. I grew up in that world. The owners would have thrown them off the stage if they ever got up there and used an F word like that. Nobody would have laughed at it. The men would have thrown chairs at a bum like that. And today, look at this. Look what they can get away with today on HBO. Shall I tell you what that acronym stands for? I can't. It's a family show. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Here we are, here we are, here we are. Welcome, welcome. Step right up, step right up. I have the cure for everything right here on the Savage Nation. I am the, I'm the NAC of talk radio. I am the N-acetylcysteine of talk radio today. And later on we will talk about some nutrients and their relationship to anxiety, depression, even schizophrenia that's been buried by the medical establishment, most particularly by the drug industry that does not want you to know that you may, and I say may, be able to ameliorate some of these problems for pennies rather than thousands of dollars. But I want to go back to the emotional question of liberal Jews and Nazis and how Harvey Weinstein, Larry David, and Bernie Madoff, in my opinion, of course, destroyed the image of the Jewish people. And I asked a loaded question at the end because I truly couldn't answer it. Where is the Albert Einstein or Jonas Salk of our time? Can you name any positive Jewish role models? So someone said, what about Mark Zuckerberg? I said, okay, let's think about that for a minute. He claims he had no religion. That's number one. Then when he decided he wanted to be political, he said he was Jewish. Or I don't know which religion, but he said he discovered religion. Once he decided to run for office, I guess he's going to try to go out to some Christian communities and sell sell people on his relationship to, uh, to Moses. I don't know. Is Mark Zuckerberg a positive role model just because he's rich? I don't know. Maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. And now we're talking about the lie of white privilege, which is bolstered by teaching uh, math. In other words, that they say teaching math is unto itself uh, racist. This is unbelievable. So someone wrote this. A P.W. Britt wrote, Professional mathematicians roll our eyes a great deal when we are presented with people whose degrees are in mathematics education. The only mathematician associated with the Common Core math standards, standards resigned from the project. No mathematician was part of that fiasco. So this Common Core education is, who, is what has produced a dunce like that woman professor, so-called, who said that you cannot teach uh, any of these higher mathematical concepts to minorities without in, in, engaging in racism. It's unbelievable to me. How stupid can people be? People write it's called the Pythagorean theorem because Pythagoras first stated it. He happened to be Greek. That's it. This teacher is truly ignorant. I think she's doing this for attention. No one can be this stupid. Then another one writes, is she aware that the leading countries in mathematical aptitude are non-white countries? How does this teacher explain this? If she argues that they had to learn it to be competitive and successful in society, she proves her own narrative false. Clearly non-whites are quite capable of learning math. Please tell me that there are none whites out here that think this is completely ridiculous. Restore my faith just a bit today, please. Another one. How stupid should people be, writes Cohen the Barbarian. The very algebra has been invented by a none white. There are more prominent mathematicians among Jews, Indians, and Chinese than among whites. Is she proposing that understanding of algebra and geometry is a criteria of whiteness? 
If so, I'd agree to that approach wholeheartedly. You see where we're going? If we let these people, people like her, impose their insanity and their racism upon our educational system, I can guarantee you this nation is doomed in the future. Because right now, China and India are making great strides in science, technology, and math, and science, as I said, while the United States and many European nations are falling behind. I guess now we should expect uh, that Chinese and Indians will be surprised to learn that they are spreading whiteness to their students. This Professor Gutierrez, who believes that equality can be achieved by punishing smart students and convincing those not very smart or just lazy that they are oppressed, is destroying the entire educational system in the United States. It is no wonder that high school and college diplomas offer meaningless little in the real world. Keep it up, and you will see this nation devolve even further. I guess you could say that it is tied up to the whole concept of entertainment and how that is the base, the, uh, the mind of America today, if you want to talk about that. Uh, so if you're Irish or Italian or black, are there any people who embarrass you as much as Jews are embarrassed by Weinstein, David, and Bernie Madoff? WABC, John, what is your ethnic background? Irish Catholic. And who is it that offends you the most? I mean, who? when you say you're Irish Catholic, who amongst the Irish Catholics make you cringe? I don't know if they're the top, but some of the Kennedys, past and present. Uh, pa uh, yeah, in the past and present. So, like, I'm serious. Like, but when you see, when you see, like, when you saw Edward Kennedy, you, you felt, what did you feel, actually? I don't want to put words in your mouth. What did you feel? You know, just as you talk about your past and where you came from, you take pride in this, you know, I take pride in the same, my religion, my family, my heritage. When you see guys like Ted Kennedy and what he did and the uh, infidelities that his brother had, it's, uh, it's embarrassing to the rest of us. All right, let's, that's good enough. I, I'm not looking to you know, turn this into more than it already is. I'm sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason when it's out in a few weeks. And you said your religion, so I figure you're a person who might want to read it, even though it's not really a religious book per se. It's about the search for religion, or the search for God more particularly. One man is one man's search, and it may help people find themselves or find their way back to believing in something more than themselves. Let's put it to you that way. Uh, let's see where we go now on this program, because we're not doing uh, Clinton paid for Kremlin dirt on Trump. That's a great headline. Read it on the Drudge Report. Study it yourself. That's all. Or read about the headline, Blood in the Water, Harvey and the Tampon Caper, if you want to get nauseous and throw up altogether. Can you believe that headline? Blood in the Water, Harvey and the Tampon Caper. Personally, I don't believe that actually occurred. I think a lot of this is invented now to bring down Weinstein. No, one, no man I ever knew in the world would have done what this woman is accusing him of. I never heard of a man who did it. I never read of a man who did it. It is probably the most demented thing I've ever heard in my entire life. And yet, because of vermin in the legal profession, they can accuse anybody today, and there's no refutation. We are now living through the equivalent of the French Revolution, where all someone had to do was say, J'accuse! And the person was put before the guillotine and their head cut off. Well, let me tell you something, Gloria Alred and your wonderful daughter, the two of you. What goes around comes around. All I can tell you is that it's only a matter of time until the guillotine that you've been dropping on men's heads will eventually fall upon yours. People will uncover things in your past, I can guarantee you, that will eventually bring you to the shame that you deserve. How's that? You can write it down, and you can mail it in if you don't mind. You can send it to michaelsavage.com, not... KLIF, Sharon, go ahead, please. What's your topic? Hi. Yes, I want to say, first, Dr. Savage, I love you. I'm so happy to be speaking with you. <laughs> oh, someone loves me. At least I found someone who does. I love, and I absolutely agree with everything you say all the time. Um, I am black, and for me, the people who are embarrassing me are these modern-day rappers. I am humiliated by how they act <laughs> and dress and present themselves because people assume that all black people act like <laughs> No, I'm laughing, <laughs> Sharon, with relief. Sharon, I'm laughing with relief because I swear to God, I have never in the modern media heard one black person ever interviewed who said they're embarrassed by rap music. Have you? 
I mean, no, I haven't. No, and that's because the filth that runs the media makes money off rap music. The filth that runs the news business, the filth that does the interviews, they also own the record companies. They distribute this filth, so they would never, ever let America see that there are black people like yourself who are just as disgusted by that garbage as anyone else would be. And they're acting just like the stereotype, and that's what makes me really angry, is that they don't even realize that you are doing exactly what racist white people assume we act like. You're acting exactly like that. And it's not, it's not a proud thing. It's very embarrassing. I, I mean, in, yeah, okay, so we watch a rap star, and then we assume every black male acts like that. Yes, it's very true. And, and every black woman is really a, a, a you-know-what, looking to shake her booty on the top, on the hood of a car. Yep, it's true. It's very true. That's what they expect. Well, you see, what that does to you, that's give you some idea of what Larry David does to me. When I watch this guy, I say, how does he not understand that to make a buck, he's debasing an entire people? Does it not bother him? I don't think so. I think these are shameless people. Okay, hey, Sharon, I'm so glad you listened on KLIF. A copy of God, Faith, and Reason goes out to you. On another topic of the fake narrative of white privilege, one of the greatest hoaxes of modern times, uh, which is now penetrating a field that you thought it would never penetrate, which is mathematics itself. I mean, mathematics cannot be based upon race at all. It's impossible by definition. And yet these fools who are associated with the Common Core math standard have found a way to destroy mathematics itself. This is a very complicated topic in some ways, by the way. It's a very, very important topic. Michelle on KSFO, I understand you are a professor, and what would you like to say about my comments about the false narrative of white privilege uh it's disgusting number one i can speak from my from my experience i'm a 30 year old white young conservative professor teaching a social science class on three different campuses up in northern california where everywhere it's everyone is a liberal basically and my students can't discern for themselves but i i can see this in not not only in my teaching and in my students but my god among among the people that i work with there is so much animosity and it is the most volatile environment that i've ever had to work in because we are constantly as educators at each other's throats and it we see this in the emails we send each other we have these michael we have these long threads of emails of professors attacking each other in a forum like this because of our personal beliefs and conservatives whenever we do speak out we are instantly silenced i i fear for my job when i speak out about my political and well that's that's the that's the sad state of liberalism today it's not true liberalism it's fascism and the fact is is that we're entering a very dangerous period which will turn violent very soon on the campuses yes. not just being fired but you know what went on on the Mao Zedong in China I'm sure you know history correct yeah okay so the Red Guards were the 15 and 14 year old thugs that the communists used to embarrass middle-class Chinese people to debase them, to humiliate them, to beat them, to drive them out of their jobs under the guise that they were counter-revolutionaries. You are, as a conservative, seen in the same light by these violent, fake progressives. And on this show, we're never calling them a progressive again. We're calling them what they are, which is regressives. Everyone take a note, please, in your savage notes. Whenever referring to a so-called liberal as a progressive, Try to remember they're not progressives, they're regressives. Now, that doesn't help you because you're in a system where if you, if you at, at all dissent from the established norm, you will be punished either by not being given tenure or being fired altogether. Is that correct? By tenure faculty who, who are conservative, who have no problem voicing their opinion via email or in their classrooms. I've been told by them, keep your mouth shut. That's right. I'm going to give you some advice. Keep it to yourself until it does not threaten your livelihood. You're living in a very dangerous uh, place in academia. Uh, you could turn it on them because you could say you're not, you're making me uncomfortable. You're not giving me a safe space. You're violating my my rights, uh, and I want you to understand that by violating my safe space, I'm going to bring charges against you. What you got to do is turn it around on them, not play by their rules, Michelle. Play by the rules of fairness. Michelle, I'm sending you a book. If you know the title, you get it. What's the title of my next book? 
God, faith, and reason, Michael. Oh, my God. You're smart. You can remember a title. You're getting a copy of it. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It is the Savage Nation. And I, I, I got to tell you this. Uh, I do have a Casper mattress. I've been sleeping on it. I would pick it over every other mattress, period. It does help me get the best night's sleep, period. Now, once you try Casper, you're going to love yours as much as I love mine. Switching to Casper is a no-brainer. It's a higher-quality mattress at a more affordable price. You will sleep cool and comfortable every night thanks to Casper's two high-tech foams, much better than on the old overpriced mattress that you probably are sleeping on. Casper ships right to your door for free in a small, how did they do that box? They'll even pick it up if you don't love it and refund you every dime from its breakthrough design and superior quality to its packaging to letting you try it for 100 nights in your own home. It's no wonder Casper was named one of Fast Company's 50 most innovative brands of 2017. So sleeping on the mattress, as you know, is the best way to try it. Put Casper to the test in your own home for 100 nights, risk-free. Just go to Casper.com, use code SAVAGE for $50 towards the purchase of your mattress. You heard me. That's Casper.com, code SAVAGE, and you're going to get $50 towards the purchase of your mattress. Casper.com, terms and conditions do apply. KSFO, Michael, you'll have the last word in this hour, short of time. Uh, what, what are you calling about? I'm calling as an Italian-American who was nauseated by Robert De Niro. What is it about Robert De Niro that you don't like? Well, number one is mouth. Uh, for a little guy, he has a very big mouth. And the typical liberal, you know, live as I say, not as I do. You know what I don't understand about De Niro? I, I, I worshipped him as an actor for many years. He was so great in every movie he was ever in. And when he suddenly became political, I was scratching my head saying, how did this guy become such a crazy man with this, I like to punch him in the nose, I hate him, he's a mook, he's a this. Does he think he's in a movie when he talks about Trump? Obviously he does, Michael, because uh, he wouldn't last, he wouldn't last uh, 10 minutes on the east side of Detroit when I was young. Well, you know, here's an interesting thing. Another actor of that, of that period is, um, who, who's the other one I like? Uh, the guy who plays it. Who? Al Pacino. Yeah, Al Pacino. Now, I'm sure Al Pacino is just as liberal as Robert De Niro, but you never hear Pacino expressing his politics, do you? No, I don't, and that's why I really admire him as an actor. Right. He keeps it to himself. How is it that De Niro became so political and so embarrassed himself, especially amongst Italian-Americans, is really a puzzle to me. I don't have an explanation for it. But, Michael, thanks for calling. I'm sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. If you'll stay on the line, that book will be out in a few weeks, at which point we will all talk about it together. Next hour, schizophrenia, anxiety, depression, and nutrition. Yes, you heard me. You heard me. There are geniuses in this field. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. So we were celebrating Fats Domino's life today. He passed yesterday. Great man, wonderful musician, all-around great soul. And uh, I've always played his songs on my show, including Blueberry Hill. And hey, you don't know about Blue Monday? Well, he's gone. Another light has gone out on the planet. And we're talking about the lights and the darknesses of our time. So let's go immediately to this. I, um, 
I looked at some of the comments people are making on my Twitter. I like Twitter for a number of reasons. I like to read the comments. If I get idiots, I delete them. You know, I don't mind debating someone, but if they want to get insulting, I just hit goodbye and they're banned forever. You want to be intelligent about your critiques, go ahead. You want to just be insulting, don't waste my time. So someone wrote this, uh, Raquel, Rachel Raquel wrote, Savage, for the record, my Corgi mix starts growling at 2.58 p.m. for your 3 p.m. Florida time show. Pet sitter confirmed. She barks until she hears you come on the air. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Are there any? No, don't call me. I know I heard a lot of dogs like my voice. I'm their, their babysitter. Well, let's see now. A lot of people said they ordered the copy of the book a month ago. Can't wait for it to arrive. You're going to get it very soon now because it's in print. Oh, look at this one. The Netflix El Chapo de Castillo Sean Penn documentary fiasco was a big nothing. Too bad El Chapo. Oh, I can't finish reading this one. Uh-oh. Don't want to read that one. Savage still uses Windows 7. Interesting. You see, when I put the picture of myself up on Twitter... My computer screens was, were up there, and people read my uh, passwords. So my assistant caught it immediately, and I had to change all my passwords. <laughs> you got to be so careful with what you post about your own, you know, right? I'm not ready to talk about anything yet. I'm, I'm relaxing. Play El Ch uh I almost said El Chapo. Play El Chocolato again. I want to hear that Chocolato. Everybody wants a copy of my Savage Nation hat. They're all saying, I can't wait to get your book. And does the hat come with it? No, the hat doesn't come with it. But because of popular demand, I'm actually having hats made now. The problem is I'm, I'm trying to find someone who makes them in America. I'm not going to sell you a hat made in the, anywhere else, okay? I had a, Someone says, where's Teddy at? How come he's not in the picture? Well, he's right here under my desk, sleeping away. And uh, I had a nightmare about him last night. I dreamed that I lost him. I had another lost Teddy dream. Do you ever dream like that about your pet? I dreamed that I turned around and he disappeared, and I couldn't find him. I called every pet thing, emergency. No one knew where he was or what he was, and he just disappeared. I, You know, I know what it is. He's 13 years old. He's a little, uh, you know, on a downturn. Let's put it to you this way. And because I discovered the remarkable uh, pet formula of coenzyme Q, I got him off the drugs that the doc put him on. She's a great vet, don't get me wrong. But uh, they usually have only a few ways of approaching illness, whether it's for a pet or anything else, and their ways are usually burn, cut, and poison. Now... I learned a lot of things back in the 60s, 70s, 80s about healing from the alternative medical community, and I mean some really brilliant people. I was fortunate enough to have met Linus Pauling Jr. Actually, it's Linus Pauling, sorry. I have, was also very lucky to have met the genius of geniuses in nutrition, who was Abraham Hoffer, MD, PhD, and I learned so much from them, which I still carry with me, and when I walk around, in America today and I see otherwise intelligent looking mothers giving their children cookies cakes in the morning even hot chocolate I just shake my head and I say what do you think these mothers themselves grew up eating sugar and don't know any better they're condemning their children to having to use drugs to control uh, the hypoglycemia that they're going to in induce in them with sugar they don't even know it do the doctors even understand hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, and what it does to the mind? Do they understand anything about nutritional deficiencies that may cause not only anxiety and depression, but schizophrenia itself? And I go back again to uh, something I learned from Hoffer. And let me tell you who he is just for a minute. He passed away a number of years ago. Hoffer, it's important for you to listen to this. Hoffer was born in Saskatchewan, Canada. And he was an MD, PhD, as I said. In the 1950s, he discovered that niacin, which is a vitamin, B3, costs pennies. In high enough doses, niacin will lower blood cholesterol. And he told me when I met him, he said, I could have patented it. I could have added something to the um, molecule and patented niacin at the time. And I knew I, I knew how to do it. He said, but I decided to give the niacin connection to lowering uh, 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 cholesterol to the world for free because I believe in advancing humanity. And that's the kind of guy he was. Now, you know that thinking has gone out of the window. No one thinks that way anymore in medicine. It's all about uh, you know making as much money as they can as fast as they can. It's unfortunately true for almost every field today. So that's the, give you an exact, a background of what he did. So he, later on, Dr. Hoffer wrote a number of popular science books on nutrition. 
And one of them it was about tr treating schizophrenia with nutrients. He was a big believer in using orthomolecular medicine, which was a, a code word for mega nutrition. He was a great man. One of my good friends who's still alive and practicing is Dr. Cunyon, K-U-N-I-N, who lives in San Francisco. Another great man, a great genius. I hope he's listening to the show. I learned so much from him. But I spent many years learning from these people. But to get back to what I'm telling you, which may apply to the general audience, Hoffa wrote a book years later, a popular book, about, uh, I don't know what it was, Blood Sugar and You. I don't know what the title was. And he talked about some of the schizophrenic patients that he was lucky enough to help with diet and nutrition. And one of them stuck in my mind forever. He said he was um, asked to treat a young woman, I think in her 20s, who was hospitalized because she was so severely mentally disturbed. And she was diagnosed as a schizophrenic and put in a mental hospital. So he asked the parents to tell them something about this girl. She had been fine in college and something went wrong from the stress. She cracked up and they put her away. They couldn't do anything for her at the time. So they he got to know them fairly well, and they told him some stories about her, and they said, you know, she seems to be better after we visit her on the weekend. She's better on the weekend. Well, he said, that's interesting. And he said, where do you go with her on the weekend? I said, well, we always go to the same place. She likes this seafood restaurant. And Hoffer, being you know the keen chemist that he was, said, what does she eat? Does she eat the same food every week? He said, oh, she loves the fried oysters, and she loves the clams. So Hoffer knows that oysters and clams are very, very rich in zinc. And he put the girl on mega doses of zinc and on mega doses of niacin, and her, her mental health was restored. Now, you'll say well, it's, only an, it's only an anecdotal case. It's not a big enough body of uh, you know people who are sick. It's not a double-blind study. I accept all of that. I'm trained in science. I know where you're coming from. But... You should look into some of the publications in these areas if you yourself or you, someone you know suffers from severe mood swings or from uh, anxiety, depression, because there are, there are ways to control it through diet and nutrition. I didn't say cure it. I said control it. I mean, there are other things that you could look into, like NAC, uh, N-acetyl, um, is it N-ac NAC, N-acetylcholine, I believe. It's a very important, uh, sorry, I may get that wrong. Wait a minute. I don't want to ever get myself wrong. Got it wrong. It's N-acetylcysteine. Sorry about that. And cysteine is an amino acid, a simple amino acid. Now, N-acetylcysteine is a modified version of cysteine, and it's been modified so that it crosses the blood-brain barrier, meaning cysteine itself as an amino acid does not cross the blood-brain barrier very readily, if at all. While N-acetylcysteine, readily available in, you know, nutrition stores, NAC, has now and is being used to treat depression and anxiety. It's a very tricky uh, story on, unto itself. But just remember, these are very inexpensive compared to the drug therapies that are generally prescribed for psychological illnesses. That's all I can say to you. And I'm not implying in any way that there's a magic bullet for anxiety, depression, or schizophrenia. I'm just telling you that these complicated mental uh, problems come from a variety of sources, which could include um, things such as oxidative stress, high cortisol levels, heavy metal poisoning, lack of sunlight, or even poor nutrition. I'm aware of the complex uh, story of all of these things, but it doesn't mean that I should not tell you about some things that may be of some help in this world where very little is talked about with regard to nutrition anymore. And I guess I'm a little ticked off because a study came out yesterday from hacks funded by the drug industry who said that they've discovered in Australia, these scientists discovered that all vitamins are a waste of money and that Australians spend billions of dollars a year on vitamins and it's all a bunch of you-know-what. Well, those studies are funded all the time by the pharmaceutical industry in order to get you to throw away the penny-on-a-dollar stuff and make you buy the thousand on a dollar stuff that's how i see it so we can go back to the other topics because i don't want to sit here and talk about nutrition and health for the next hour it's kind of exhausting and again i'm not able to treat illness or advise on treating illness because i'm not a medical doctor number one and number two even if i was i wouldn't do it on the radio it would be foolish to do so i'm giving you some general general advice uh on, on these subjects
Look up Abraham Hoffer. Look at some of his publications. And you will see what he had to write about schizophrenia and things of that nature. And it may actually help you. By the way, it's interesting to note that you say, oh, Hoffer, and you say, I don't know him, never heard of him. But he was one of the early pioneers in the use of LSD in order to treat um, alcoholism. And he worked with a great man named um, Humphrey Osmond. What's interesting to me is that all of this early science has been forgotten by this generation. They know nothing about these pioneers in nutrition, and many people are now treating themselves and maybe uh, to the detriment of their own health, I can't really say. All right, let's go back to the main topics which I know attract your attention. The first topic I did today was liberal Jews and Nazis, how Weinstein, Larry David, and Madoff destroyed the image of Jewish people. And then I asked you which people in your ethnic heritage, Italians, blacks, Irish, or others, embarrass you the most. I then talked about the hoax called white privilege and the death of learning in America uh, and how we have to fight against these lunatics in order to save this nation. And I got great callers, by the way. Don't think I'm struggling for them. But we have one open line at 855-400-7282. Now, if you'd like me to do the news, I would suggest you just go to the websites to do the news better than I can do the news. Go where I go. Go to the Drudge Report. Go to some of the other websites, and that's the end of it. D.C. Rock, Clinton paid for Kremlin dirt on Trump. Now let's move on. Uh, we understand it was a hoax. When it, I'll just talk about it for a minute. When it first came out about the lie about the sex capades in Moscow, I don't have the tape. I could pull it to show you how smart I am. I know what I said. I remember it. I have a, a mind that really doesn't forget the important stuff. I forget the simple stuff. I said this is a bunch of rubbish. Why would a man like Donald Trump, who has such a beautiful wife and a bevy of women wherever he ever wanted them, before he was married or between he was married, why would he need to hire someone to do a thing like that to him, number one? And number two, why would he do it in a Russian hotel room where he knew he was being uh, videotaped? I said, the whole thing is a lie. Stop with this garbage. It turns out that the Clintons are just like the communists were or the Nazis were in terms of smearing and debasing people. What else is new? We know who she is. That's why she lost. And I don't care how she lost. All I can say is good riddance to these communist vermin. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. <laughs> When I see the Wall Street Journal, I'm shifting out of politics for a minute. When I see even the Wall Street Journal saying Mueller is the wrong sleuth when his ex-agency is so tangled up with Russia, and they write about the FBI's political meddling, he's on the way out. And I, I, I'm going to make a prediction on this show. I have no way to know if it's true. Trump is going to fire Mueller, and it's going to happen suddenly. And it'll happen in a way that will um, completely take the wind out of the wolf blitzers and the other rats on the left who would normally jump down his throat. Wait until you see. You'll see the timing on this one. There's a lot of demands right now that Mueller recuse himself from the Russia investigation. And the Wall Street Journal says that may not be the fanciful partisan grandstanding you may imagine. You've got to read it yourself. It's an amazing story. Let's go to the callers, though, on the, on the subject of which people in your own ethnic group embarrass you the most. Alex, WABC, who in your ethnic group embarrasses you and why? Um, it would have to, I'm half Colombian, and it would have to be the likes of Pablo Escobar and all the drug cartels, but also the fact that Hollywood has, has profited by just glorifying them as folk heroes and just paint it like just constantly. And that's interesting. So whenever, when you tell anyone you're Colombian, what do you get, like a leery look? They think that you're a, a, a drug dealer? <laughs> if I had, oh man, if I had a dollar for that, oh my God, I'd be... I'd be driving. Am I, uh, am I right? Every time, if they, they look at you, they don't know if you're Italian, right? They figure, they're trying to figure you out. And, and they probably say to you, oh, what, uh, what country you come from, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, most Colombians are Mazitos anyway, so it's like we're, we're mixed. So they, they probably automatically assume we're Italian anyway, because a lot of us are descended from Spain. I'm half Spaniard myself, but, you know, it's just... Yeah, yeah right. So the minute you say Colombian, they get leery. They get afraid of you, right? 
Not really. Well, not not necessarily even afraid anymore. I mean, it depends on what. If I'm hanging around liberals, they're going to be like, "Hey, where can I get some? Where can I sc- score some?" <laughs> well, if I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure that you don't talk about neckties with them. I don't think it would go over very well. Oh uh, no, it's just it's just. Ah, uh, come on. Back in a minute. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. He wouldn't travel. He hated touring. And he said one of the reasons was he could never get the food he liked. He liked his food from his own neighborhood. Sounds familiar to me. A lot of people don't like traveling, by the way. I think it's overrated. But nevertheless, to put it bluntly, a light has gone out in the world. Now let's go to some of the callers on the Savage Nation. WABC, Dave, what is your topic, please? Thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Yes, I want to know who was an, an embarrassment to me, who from my religion. And I'm Jewish, and I would say it's uh, Supreme Court Justices Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Elena Kagan. They want to bring well, you have no argument with me, but what is it about? No, but what? See if you can define it in a classy way. What is it about those two women that get you ner- like make you cringe? Uh, they want to uh, bring down the morality of this country, <laughs> and you know, they, if if they had their way, they would kneel during the national anthem. Mm. <laughs> the opportunity. So they're so far to the left that they're an embarrassment to you in plain English. It's their politics. You know, the, the most Jews in the world will probably say they're proud of them. But uh, as you say, it's a mental disorder. So, so I sense you don't have too many friends amongst your own people. Oh, you, oh I have a lot of friends. I'm Orthodox Jew. we got a lot of friends. <laughs> wait, wait you, wait, you said something funny. You said, um, you said I have a lot of friends, and then you added something I couldn't follow. What? I'm an Orthodox Jew, and most of us are uh, on the conservative side. Oh, you know, most people who are not in the religious community don't know that most Orthodox Jews are very conservative politically. They don't know that. That's correct. They they look at people in black clothing and they say, "I." Uh, they 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 figure you're all nuts and and weird, <laughs> but they don't. No, no but they no, but they. Well, yeah, well, you are nuts because you practice a form of life that is so antiquated that you really must know God is existing that you would continue to do. I want to ask you something about that. Do Orthodox Jews believe in a hereafter, that there's punishment for life on this earth? A punishment? Or what about a reward? I, I'm a negativist. Okay, uh, is there either a punishment or a reward or both? Some get rewarded and some get punished. Oh, okay, no, but what happens? When an Orthodox Jew dies, what do they believe happens? I, they, um, I'm really not sure, but uh, I, I would imagine, I'm, I'm looking, I'm a positive person, so I'm looking forward to... Uh, Meeting up with all the great, great, great scholars and great people up there, and isn't that interesting? Whatever, whatever, um... you know, nobody really talks about it. Nobody even dares talk about that topic of what actually happens when you die at the moment that you die. I mean, are you judged? I once asked recently. I said, "Why did you?" I asked an Orthodox Jewish rabbi, uh, "Do you believe in um, uh, what do you call it when they when they incinerate the body?" I don't even know the word. I swear, I'm like blanking, blocking it. What do you call it? In, Cremation. I said, do Jewish people of, uh, who are religious believe in cremation? He said, absolutely not. So I said to him, well, why not? He said, w- because we believe, he said, that after you die, your soul hovers over your body for a short period of time, during which time you are judged. And if you incinerate the body, you can never, ever, ever, ever experience life again. Well, you certainly are judged, and you're rewarded for all your good deeds in this world. Well, as an Orthodox person who reads the Bible and practices and follows all the commandments, I'm really asking a level question. Here I am, a secular person. I wrote the book God, Faith, and Reason oh. about my, stru- my struggle. Would you actually be interested in reading such a book? Of course. I have your other book. But why would you read it? In other words, I'm trying to figure out would a religious person want to read this book or only the people who are not religious who maybe want to get a touch of another guy's struggles. I don't know who might actually want to read this book. I think, I think uh, well, certainly your religious, uh, the listeners among, among your listeners are religious people, and they certainly would want, to, would want to read your book. I hope so. I'm sending you a copy. Show it proudly. You know, if you're an average person, and you've had my books in the past, I'm not going to go into reading it, not, but I was thinking about it. 
Let's say you're on a subway or a bus or in a public place or in an office. If you put out a book like Trump's War, you might get some flack at work. Or if you put out an, an earlier version like Scorched Earth, people can say, who are you? I'm a... But I'm saying if you were to carry around a copy of God, Faith, and Reason by Michael Savage, who are you going to offend with that other than witches, warlocks, atheists, and other than no good nicks? So this might be a way to get the word of God and the concept of faith and reason into the popular mainstream just simply by using the book as a billboard, a little your own little billboard. That's all. All right, let's go to some callers. FTW, that's a radio station in Florida. Cliff, what topic are you calling about? Uh, I am a third generation uh, German American, and uh, my mother's side of the family came over from Germany. My father's side of the family came from Czechoslovakia. I'm your stereotypical Hollywood, uh, six foot two blonde. My Marine buddies used to call me Hitler Youth and things like that. Just joking. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. You got to laugh out of me on that one. But uh, I, when I see these idiot white supremacists, you'll see one leader and about what ten followers out there screaming Sig Heil and all that garbage. It's an embarrassment. It really is because people will relate my looks to these idiots. Oh, I never thought of that. No, you see, I never thought about that, how those those jerks start to project a stereotype along the lines of what Larry David does to Jewish men. Yes. All right. All right. I understand where you're coming from. Now, it makes you a target. They all think you're a Nazi, in other words. Just like but, yeah. because of Larry David and Woody Allen, everyone thinks that every Jewish male is a moron, a schlemiel, a coward, a guy who runs away from everything, a jerk. Because of Madoff, they think all Jewish men are thieves. Because of uh, Harvey Weinstein, they figure everyone is a pervert. Yeah, well, you know, we're, we're dealing with this topic for a good reason, because we're, leaving, we're living in a, a cartoonish era right now, where everything is reduced to a, a, a stereotype, a, propaganda, a propagandist image. All right, Cliff, I'm sending you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason. I'm sure you will enjoy it. Shall we move on? No, I like this topic a lot. And I want to go back for a moment to the biggest political story of the day, which is Mueller has to go. And the Wall Street Journal article that is out now is the most important one on it. The FBI's political, let me read it to you. The FBI's political meddling, Mueller is the wrong sleuth when his ex-agency is so tangled up with Russia. It's so brilliantly written by Holman W. Jenkins Jr. And you can get it up on uh, the Drudge Report where I found it. And he makes a very good case as to why... Uh, the FBI is now so embarrassed by what they have done that they have to recuse themselves from the Rus Russia investigation. And it seems to me that Trump is going to turn this around on them. And he, at one line he says, Mueller's tenure may not have bridged the two investigations, but Comey's, Rod Rosenstein's, Andrew Weissman, and Andrew McCabe's did. Mr. Rosenstein appointed Mr. Mueller as special counsel. Mr. Weissman now serves on Mueller's team. Mr. McCabe remains deputy FBI director, and he writes, all were involved in the nuclear racketeering matter and the Russian meddling matter. Then he says, let's stop here. All this needs to be sorted out, but not in a spirit of panic and hysteria. We are a prosperous, successful country in pretty good shape right now by historical standards, even if our officials behave in the frequently dubious, self-interested way they always have. But still, he writes, by any normal evidentiary, evidentiary, probative, or journalistic measure, the big story here is the FBI. It's politicized handling of Russian matters and not, comp and not competently so. And he concludes with this paragraph. Tell me if you agree or not. To put it bluntly, whatever its hip pocket rationales along the way, the FBI would not have so much to cover up now if it had not helped give us Mrs. Clinton as Democratic nominee and then, in all likelihood, inadvertently helped Mr. Trump to the presidency. That's what I call journalism. This is great writing. This is the use of language at its best in terms of journalistic use of the language, not literary use of the language. And it's Holman W. Jenkins Jr. in the Wall Street Journal. Now on to the callers uh, on a more mundane topic of who in your ethnic group embarrasses you the most. Uh, let's see, I can give you a list. I named a few, but I mean, I'll, let's look at the media. I can start with Hollywood and go to the news media. We don't have to limit it to Larry David and 
Harvey Weinstein and, and Bernie Madoff. I can go down the list. I'll give you a nice list. But I'm not going to do it. I think it's time to be shamed out of the business or maybe shamed into behaving like Americans instead of like the schlemiels and weasels that they are. The stooges of the Democrat socialist leftist machine that they are. The stooges of the most deplorable segment of American society that they have become. Why do you think America has such contempt for the news media? If you look at what they actually do and how they behave and what they pretend to be, you'll understand why most people despise them. It's that simple. Let me play a sound bite. I think maybe that's what I want to do right now. It's almost a quarter to the hour. Would you believe it? Time just flies away with me. I don't know who to play. Bloomberg doesn't like Brexit. Representative Al Green. Oh, wait. Would the day be complete? I guess Pelosi didn't take her nutrients today because we haven't heard from her. They have not yet given her her niacin or her uh, N-acetyl cysteine for the day, I suppose, and so she hasn't yet appeared on MSNBC. But as soon as the nutrients cross her blood-brain barrier, I'm sure, she'll be ma I'm sure she'll be making a late afternoon appearance. But Maxine Waters is a woman who apparently does not need nutrients to open her mouth. And here she is again in clip eight. What would the day be like without Maxine Waters? I think that I have been extremely responsible in laying out the case for why this president should be impeached. I know that the right wing, the uh, white nationalists, all of those who are organized around this president do not like this. And people are not accustomed to a woman in particular, an African-American woman, taking this kind of leadership. How dare me uh, challenge the president of the United States? But we have never witnessed mm, yeah, a president right, right, right. who has all been right. as irresponsible. Right, get off your high horse. Get off your high horse. Because let me tell you something, Maxine. If you were smart, you'd dummy up and disappear before it's too late. Let me tell you what's coming, Maxine. You keep shooting off your big mouth and you keep stirring up racism and you keep hiding behind race. Let me tell you what's coming. You're pissing off so many people that some of them are going to dig up your relationship to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, your husband's banking interests, the fact that you authorized the $12 million loan to your husband's bank when you were in charge of that committee. Maxine, dummy up and shut up before it's too late. That would be my advice. And it's not based on race. It's based on intelligence. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Fuck. <laughs> Hey, 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 if you travel for business, you know it's a game of wins and losses. Popping open an overhead bin and you find it empty, that's a win. What if you sleep through a wake-up call? That's a loss. Buying your business trip at Upside.com, that's not just a win, it's a triple win. Number one is Upside has the absolute best available prices for flights, hotel, or rental cars. With number two is that Upside will reward you with a gift card to places like Amazon.com every time you buy a business trip. And number three is the amazing six-star treatment you'll get from Upside's customer service specialists. One recent Upside customer was called away for an emergency meeting and had to miss his wife's birthday. So an Upside navigator sent her flowers to try and help ease the disappointment. That's pretty good, right? And that's just one example of how Upside navigators go above and beyond for business travelers. Imagine what they'll do for you. Remember, this Upside navigators are instantly accessible 24-7 by voice, chat, email, or message on the Upside app even reaching out to you with useful info to help you avoid a problem even before it happens. And I'm going to start your Upside six-star treatment right now. Go to Upside.com, use my code SAVAGE, and you're going to get a minimum $100 gift card to Amazon.com. You heard me. That's code SAVAGE for a minimum $100 gift card to Amazon.com when you buy your next business trip at Upside.com. Upside.com, you deserve a better business trip. Minimum purchase required. See site for complete details upside.com ksfo line two robert what is on your mind yeah something that really bothers me is i'm half irish and half mexican my family's right out of mexico uh i'm a citizen here I'm born on a military base uh it really bothers me when i see mexicans uh flying the mexican flag on their cars on the hood of their cars out the windows uh, it's uh, disrespectful to me 
Yeah, well, that's called Mexican uh, uber nationalism. That doesn't seem to bother the people who hate Donald Trump. They seem to respect everyone's nationality except their own. Isn't that interesting? It, it bothers me so much because my mother grew up in Juarez, Mexico, and uh, explained to me how much freedom I have here and even took me there before. And now they don't even go there because it's basically ran by the cartel. And then people want to act like it's the place to be. Yeah, I know. They leave the third world hellholes and they come here and wave the flag of the third world hellhole. Uh, and that is very upsetting, not only to you as a person of Latino or Hispanic heritage, but it's extremely, frankly, upsetting to me. I watch boxing matches. I find it very sickening to see people running around with Mexican flags at a boxing match in America. I've never seen an American flag waved in a Mexican arena. Have you? No, I have not. No, because the, the American who waved the flag would be killed by the peace-loving people in the arena. Now, it's time for people to understand that what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. And I appreciate you joining the program and expressing uh, which part of your ethnic heritage or people or what they do in the ethnic heritage bothers you the most. And I will, my good friend, send you a copy of God, Faith, and Reason, which will be out in two weeks if you'll stay on the line. And the book is not for people who are really... I'm not going to say who it's not for. I don't know who it's for. You wait till I read it on the air. I'm holding my fire. You'll have to decide. We've also talked about the hoax of white privilege, the death of learning. We have talked about... Uh, the nutritional therapies for uh, schizophrenia and anxiety and depression. We have talked about my main monologue topic, which really I should put on michaelsavage.com, which I will, Karen, if you're listening, liberal Jews and Nazis, how Harvey Weinstein, Larry David, and Bernie Madoff destroyed the image of the Jewish people, comma, in my opinion. That'll be up on michaelsavage.com before the end of the day, I hope. And the object here is to serve the interests of of the American people. All Jews are not like Harvey Weinstein. They're not like Larry David, and they're not like Bernie Madoff, any more than Al Capone represented the Italians. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It is the Savage Nation. We're talking here about how liberal Jews, uh, such as those I named, in my opinion, destroyed the image of the Jewish people, and which amongst your particular race or such religion, if you want to put it that way, embarrass you. And just what the Jewish people needed was uh, Harvey Weinstein to come along at this time. Perfect. Uh, and we needed Bernie Madoff even more. Even more important was Bernie Madoff. Every stereotype about a Jewish crook who robbed his own mother and every Jewish charity he could get his stinking dirty hands on, just what the Jewish people ordered in this uh, incendiary time of ours. And then along comes Harvey Weinstein. In my estimation, the Nazi posters portrayed people who looked like Harvey Weinstein. If you did him in ste you couldn't stereotype what the Nazis did more particularly than with him. I don't understand how this happens. And now along comes Larry David. It wasn't bad enough that we lived through the previous incarnations of this show, but he has to revitalize it, and I told you, I'm just scanning by it, and here's a Jewish funeral turned into a mockery of every Jewish stereotype once again. And I got to tell you, the other characters are so bad. The one who played the wife, Cheryl, man, is she over the hill. Has she suffered in that marriage with that Kennedy guy? That's all I could think when I saw her face had changed completely. And then there's a, another character who plays a Jewish woman, with a loud mouth, every word out of her mouth is a filthy, dirty F word. That's humor today. No, it's humor only amongst people who wouldn't have even made it in the Borscht Belt. Because let me tell you something. In the Borscht Belt days of comedy, there was no dirty words. I grew up in that world 
The owners would have thrown them off the stage if they ever got up there and used an F word like that. Nobody would have laughed at it. The men would have thrown chairs at a bum like that. And today, look at this. Look what they can get away with today on HBO. Shall I tell you what that acronym stands for? I can't. It's a family show. So what triggered my monologue today that liberal on, on liberal Jews and Nazis, how Harvey Weinstein, Larry David, and Bernie Madoff destroyed the image of the Jewish people? Well, I'll tell you what did it. I was watching HBO last night, and I pur purposely did not want to watch Larry David's replay, his new series, because I, I, I don't like his stereotype. But I was scanning through it. It was the last 10 minutes of his latest one. I was so appalled I couldn't sleep. And so I thought I should write this today and maybe vent for myself and vent for others. So here it goes. The current crop of Jewish people are unfortunately typified by the above three. Try to name a prominent person of the Jewish faith who is a positive role model in the United States and the world. Can you name one? Where is the Albert Einstein or Jonas Salk of our time? New lows are hit on a daily basis. It was bad enough that Woody Allen single-handedly debased the image of the Jewish male forever by playing up the Yiddish stereotype of the Schlemiel and made a fortune laughing all the way to the bank. You see, Woody Allen created the image of the weak, servile, cowardly Jew to get where he is. And now we come to the special case of Larry David. On a recent episode of his revitalized series, HBO hit a new low in anti-Semitism by airing this insanity. In this episode, the scene is set at a Jewish funeral for a boy who died in an accident. The Larry David character fights with the usher over a seat, pushes his way through the mourners to get a better seat, tells the grieving mother to shut up and stop crying, and tops it all off when an Arab arrives to join the mourners. David starts screaming, gun, gun, he's got a gun! And the entire congregation is seen trampling on each other to run out of the synagogue in cowardice, fear, and terror. Now what does such, quote, comedy serve but to ignite the ugliest stereotypes of Jews. Is there no bottom to what low-grade comedians will do to bank a few dollars? Is this not a stereotype unto itself? All this is doing is stirring up negative images of Jewish people, period. No, there shouldn't be a law to prevent this kind of racism, but there should be some kind of self-constraint on the type of lowlifes that create this product. In a past generation, blacks were portrayed as servile and foolish in the character known as Step and Fetch It. In the 1940s, the Step and Fetch It character was the type who always said, Yes, sir, and made white audiences laugh hysterically because he portrayed the black male in the way white audiences wanted to see black males, which was servile and stupid. Sort of all of them were Pullman Porters. When was the last time you've seen a black character doing that? You would never see a black character putting down blacks, would you? Not only would such a character never be aired by the major media, not only would no one in Hollywood ever fund such a character, but I don't think such a character even exists in the African-American community. And yet Hollywood and HBO rush to fund the ugly stereotype created by Larry David. As far as Harvey Weinstein goes... I'm sad to tell you that there were Nazi posters and films created by the propaganda, propaganda minister Goebbels, which portrayed Jews in the manner of a Harvey Weinstein. They looked like him. It is hard to believe that a living embodiment of these Nazi posters has now appeared in our time. I can only conclude by asking, where are the positive Jewish role models today? Can you name one? And the same thing now applies to Italians blacks, and Irish. Who embarrasses you amongst your people? This is the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-400-7282. MichaelSavage.com is the website. No, I will not be talking about the dossier. That's Radio 01, not even 101. But to just read the Drudge Report and give you a story you can read yourself. We know the Democrats created dirty stuff about Trump that was a lie. I said it to you when it came out. I said, on the face of it, Trump wouldn't do a thing like this. Of course it was created as a smear tactic. What else is new? The Democrats are the communists of our time. This is what they do. And what are the consequences going to be? A rash? Hillary Clinton's going to break out in a headache, flushing, abnormal vision, nasal congestion, back pain, muscular pain, nausea, dizziness, rash, or diarrhea because she's been exposed for what she is? No. That's why I'm not covering the dossier. I'll leave it to others to do that. 
Instead, I want to cover topics that are important to me. And this one is important to me. Liberal Jews and Nazis. How Harvey Weinstein, Larry David, and Bernie Madoff destroyed the image of the Jewish people, comma, in my opinion. We know that the Italian people hated the Soprano show because it stereotyped Italians as all being in criminality or in gangs, somehow tied into the, to the uh, mafia. And most Italians hated that show. The only people who liked the Sopranos were non-Italians, by and large, who loved it because it stereotyped Italians, just as uh, Larry David does, and he stereotypes the worst of the Jews. It's very easy to glorify criminals, which this society does through the media, which is why we lo love to hate the media. We watch the movies about criminals. Uh, somehow we live through it, and then we go out of the movie theater or leave the TV room, and we live in the real world where this devastation occurs. It's very, very difficult to tell you that we must not glorify criminality at any time. On the other side of that line are the police, the detectives, who prevent this from spreading even further in the United States of America. People you may not even know interdicting drugs, stopping the poison from spreading. We already have an opioid crisis now. Remember I covered the family, the Sackler family that controls OxyContin? Remember that story? I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but I said something in passing that should not be ignored today. I said, and you thought that the Crips and the Bloods were the most dangerous drug dealers in America. Remember I said that? You know that the major pharmaceutical companies are probably more dangerous than the cartels in terms of what they do to the society, in terms of their marketing, in terms of the poisoning of this country. This is not to say that all drugs are poison and that all medicines are not great, are, are, are harmful. I didn't say that. But when you see a single family controlling OxyContin and the devastation that this drug OxyContin has con con that continues to occur, you have to look beyond the criminal cartels. And then you ask yourself, they're on the boards of every museum in the world. So how different is it then than the overt murderous drug dealers to those who own the pharmaceutical companies, for example, that peddle these dangerous drugs? And these are questions that many of us who think are asking. And then you ask yourself, why does the government do nothing about it? When Donald Trump came to power, one of the things he said he would do was do everything he could to stop the opioid epidemic. Remember, he went up to New Hampshire where it's devastated one community after another. I haven't seen anything done, have you? I see a lot of MS-13 gang members being rounded up. I don't see any people in white shirts and ties being taken out of glass of buildings in New Haven, Connecticut, for example. Say glass buildings. I'm using a metaphor, a pharmaceutical company. So what do you do in a situation like this? You try to keep yourself away from it. You try to keep your kids away from it. You try to get your kids involved with sports. You try to tell them that drugs are a road to hell and death. And would you be successful? Maybe. Who knows if you're lucky. Is there any single answer that, that gives you the answer? No, if I had it, I would put it in the bottle and sell it to you. I don't have an answer. I know that sports generally will keep a child away from drugs, generally. That works. Not always. Sometimes doesn't. I get it. But you got to give children something, some other outlet. And you can't glorify that life. Ask the black guys who are reformed gangbangers, who are in these communities around America trying to save the next generation from going down that road. Ask them what they have to do to keep the kids away from that very attractive life where the guy who's selling that poison has the big car and all the girls. What do you think a little boy 10 years old is going to think about them when he sees his father breaking his, if he still has a father at home, or his mother, more likely, going to two jobs or three jobs? What is he going to think? In order to make his mommy happy, he's going to have to become like those, those bad gangsters down the street. It's a very tough world that we're living in, particularly for those in those communities. You get it? I told you the story of a so-called professor at the University of Illinois, which used to be a great university before affirmative action destroyed it. A so I could see if it was a professor of, let's say, ethnic studies who did this, or a professor of uh, I, I don't know, basket weaving. But this person is a math professor 
who has the nerve to say that algebra and geometry perpetuate white privilege. And she goes further, this nutcase. She says math professors must learn to teach that all knowledge is relative, that things cannot be known objectively. They must be known subjectively, which, of course, is utter rubbish. And I can prove it in one paragraph. Are you ready for this? Curse me if you want, and curse all males, all white males if you want, or curse all males if you want, but that will change nothing about reality. Would we have atomic physics and electricity if it hadn't been for the ancient Greek philosophers who, for example, had the idea that all matter consists of tiny atoms? Did you know that in the 5th century B.C., Aristotle used electric charges to treat gout because he understood what electric charges were? Did you know that Archimedes perceived the center of gravity of solid cylinders and spheres? Now, these basic discoveries of Greek civilization went to the Romans, and after the fall of Rome, these basic discoveries passed to later Euro to Europeans who expanded on the scientific knowledge, and in modern times, these ideas were developed by such Europeans as Volta, Ampere, Watts, Bell, Edison, and Einstein, who provided the basis for most of the technical wonders of today. All of them dreaded white males who thought that they could think objectively. Do you understand that the ancient Greek philosophers started it all? Do you understand that Archimedes, who perceived the center of gravity of solid cylinders and spheres, which is something that is taught in basic geometry from the time that geometry was first taught, is based upon objective reasoning. That is how he came to understand what the center of gravity of solids, cylinders, and spheres are. Do you understand that without that basic building block of thought, there is no logic, there is no science, there is no civilization? This is the Savage Nation. Be here. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Let's see where we go now on this program, because if we're not doing uh, Clinton paid for Kremlin dirt on Trump. That's a great headline. Read it on the Drudge Report. Study it yourself. That's all. Or read about the headline, Blood in the Water, Harvey and the Tampon Caper, if you want to get nauseous and throw up altogether. Can you believe that headline? Blood in the Water, Harvey and the Tampon Caper. Personally, I don't believe that actually occurred. I think a lot of this is invented now to bring down Weinstein. No, one, no man I ever knew in the world would have done what this woman is accusing him of. I never heard of a man who did it. I never read of a man who did it. It is probably the most demented thing I've ever heard in my entire life. And yet, because of vermin in the legal profession, they can accuse anybody today, and there's no refutation. We are now living through the equivalent of the French Revolution, where all someone had to do was say, J'accuse! And the person was put before the guillotine and their head cut off. Well, let me tell you something, Gloria Alred and your wonderful daughter, the two of you. What goes around comes around. All I can tell you is that it's only a matter of time until the guillotine that you've been dropping on men's heads will eventually fall upon yours. People will have things in your past, I can guarantee you, that will eventually bring you to the shame that you deserve. How's that? You can write it down, and you can mail it in if you don't mind. You can send it to michaelsavage.com, not... When have you last seen a Jewish male portrayed uh, as, let's say, an Israeli war hero? Tell me when, or an American war hero, like never. When have the vermin of Hollywood ever shown a Jewish male in any way other than a shlemiel, a shlemazel, a weakling, a coward, someone who puts himself down? Tell me when. The fact is, is that we're entering a very dangerous period, which will turn violent very soon on the campuses, not just being fired, but you know what went on under Mao Zedong in China. I'm sure you know history. So the Red Guards were the 15- and 14-year-old thugs that the communists used to embarrass middle-class Chinese people, to debase them, to humiliate them, to beat them, to drive them out of their jobs under the guise that they were counter-revolutionaries. You are, as a conservative, seen in the same light by these violent, fake progressives. 
And on this show, we're never calling them a progressive again. We're calling them what they are, which is regressives. Everyone take a note, please, in your savage notes. Whenever referring to a so-called liberal as a progressive, try to remember they're not progressives, they're regressives. Now, that doesn't help you because you're in a system where if you, if you at, at all dissent from the established norm, you will be punished. But I want to go back to the emotional question of liberal Jews and Nazis and how Harvey Weinstein, Larry David, and Bernie Madoff, in my opinion, of course, destroyed the image of the Jewish people. And I ask a loaded question because I truly couldn't answer it. Where is the Albert Einstein or Jonas Salk of our time? Can you name any positive Jewish role models? So someone said, what about Mark Zuckerberg? I said, okay, let's think about that for a minute. He claims he had no religion. That's number one. Then when he decided he wanted to be political, he said he was Jewish. Or I don't know which religion, but he said he discovered religion. Once he decided to run for office, I guess he's going to try to go out to some Christian communities and sell, sell people on his relationship to, uh, to Moses. I don't know, is Mark Zuckerberg a positive role model just because he's rich? I don't know. Maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. And now we're talking about the lie of white privilege, which is bolstered by teaching uh, math. In other words, that they say teaching math is unto itself uh, racist. This is unbelievable. So someone wrote this. A P.W. Britt wrote, Professional mathematicians roll our eyes a great deal when we are presented with people whose degrees are in mathematics education. The only mathematician associated with the Common Core math standards, standards resigned from the project. No mathematician was part of that fiasco. So this Common Core education is, who, is what has produced a dunce like that woman professor, so-called, who said that you cannot teach uh, any of these higher mathematical concepts to minorities without in, in, engaging in racism. It's unbelievable to me. How stupid can people be? People write it's called the Pythagorean theorem because Pythagoras first stated it. He happened to be Greek. That's it. This teacher is truly ignorant. I think she's doing this for attention. No one could be this stupid. Then another one writes, is she aware that the leading countries in mathematical aptitude are non-white countries? How does this teacher explain this? If she argues that they had to learn it to be competitive and successful in society, she proves her own narrative false. Clearly, non-whites are quite capable of learning math. Please tell me that there are non-whites out here that think this is completely ridiculous. Restore my faith just a bit today, please. Another one. How stupid should people be, writes Cohen the Barbarian. The very algebra has been invented by a non-white. There are more prominent mathematicians among Jews, Indians, and Chinese than among whites. Is she proposing that understanding of algebra and geometry is a criteria of whiteness? If so, I'd agree to that approach wholeheartedly. You see where we're going? If we let these people, people like her, impose their insanity and their racism upon our educational system, I can guarantee you this nation is doomed in the future. Because right now, China and India are making great strides in science, technology, and math, and science, as I said, while the United States and many European nations are falling behind. I guess now we should expect uh, that Chinese and Indians will be surprised to learn that they are spreading whiteness to their students. This Professor Gutierrez, who believes that equality can be achieved by punishing smart students and convincing those not very smart or just lazy that they are oppressed, is destroying the entire educational system in the United States. It is no wonder that high school and college diplomas offer meaningless little in the real world. Keep it up, and you will see this nation devolve even further. We're talking about the lights and the darknesses of our time. So let's go immediately to this. I, um, I looked at some of the comments people are making on my Twitter. I like Twitter for a number of reasons. I like to read the comments. If I get idiots, I delete them. You know, I don't mind debating someone, but if they want to get insulting, I just hit goodbye and they're banned forever. You want to be intelligent about your critiques, go ahead. You want to just be insulting, don't waste my time. 
So someone wrote this, uh, Raquel, Rachel Raquel wrote, Savage, for the record, my Corgi mix starts growling at 2.58 p.m. for your 3 p.m. Florida time show. Pet sitter confirmed. She barks until she hears you come on the air. <laughs> That's funny. A lot of people said they ordered the copy of the book a month ago. Can't wait for it to arrive. You're going to get it very soon now because it's in print. Savage still uses Windows 7. Interesting. You see, when I put the picture of myself up on Twitter, my computer screens was, were up there. and People read my uh, passwords. So my assistant caught it immediately, and I had to change all my passwords. <laughs> you got to be so careful with what you post about your own, you know, right? Everybody wants a copy of my Savage Nation hat. They're all saying, I can't wait to get your book. And does the hat come with it? No, the hat doesn't come with it. But because of popular demand, I'm actually having hats made now. The problem is I'm, I'm trying to find someone who makes them in America. I'm not going to sell you a hat made in, uh, anywhere else, okay? I had a, someone says, where's Teddy at? How come he's not in the picture? Well, he's right here under my desk, sleeping away. And uh, I had a nightmare about him last night. I dreamed that I lost him. I had another lost Teddy dream. Do you ever dream like that about your pet? I dreamed that I turned around and he disappeared and I couldn't find him. I called every pet thing, emergency. No one knew where he was or what he was and he just disappeared. I, You know, I know what it is. He's 13 years old. He's a little, uh, you know, on the downturn. Let's put it to you this way. And because I discovered the remarkable uh, pet formula of coenzyme Q, I got him off the drugs that the doc put him on. She's a great vet, don't get me wrong. But uh, they usually have only a few ways of approaching illness, whether it's for a pet or anything else, and their ways are usually burn, cut, and poison. Now, I learned a lot of things back in the 60s, 70s, 80s about healing from the alternative medical community, and I mean some really brilliant people. I was fortunate enough to have met Linus Pauling, Junior, I believe, actually, he's Linus Pauling, sorry. I have, was also very lucky to have met the genius of geniuses in nutrition, who was Abraham Hoffer, MD, PhD. And I learned so much from them, which I still carry with me. And when I walk around in America today and I see otherwise intelligent looking mothers giving their children cookies, cakes in the morning, even hot chocolate, I just shake my head. And I say, what do you think? These mothers themselves grew up eating sugar and don't know any better. They're condemning their children to having to use drugs to control uh, the hypoglycemia that they're going to in induce in them with sugar. They don't even know it. Do the doctors even understand hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, and what it does to the mind? Do they understand anything about nutritional deficiencies that may cause not only anxiety and depression, but schizophrenia itself? And I go back again to uh, something I learned from Hoffer. And let me tell you who he is just for a minute. He passed away a number of years ago. Hoffer, it's important for you to listen to this. Hoffer was born in Saskatchewan, Canada. And he was an MD, PhD, as I said. In the 1950s, he discovered that niacin, which is a vitamin, B3, costs pennies. In high enough doses, niacin will lower blood cholesterol. And he told me when I met him, he said, I could have patented it. I could have added something to the um, molecule and patented niacin at the time. And I knew I, I knew how to do it. He said, but I decided to give the niacin connection to lowering uh, 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 cholesterol to the world for free because I believe in advancing humanity. And that's the kind of guy he was. Now, you know that thinking has gone out of the window. No one thinks that way anymore in medicine. It's all about uh, you know making as much money as they can as fast as they can. It's unfortunately true for almost every field today. So that's the, I'll give you an exact a background of what he did. So he, later on, Dr. Hoffer wrote a number of popular science books on nutrition, and one of them was about tr treating schizophrenia with nutrients. He was a big believer in using orthomolecular medicine, which was a, a code word for mega nutrition. He was a great man. One of my good friends who's still alive and practicing is Dr. Cunyon, K-U-N-I-N, who lives in San Francisco. Another great man, a great genius. I hope he's listening to the show. I learned so much from him. But I spent many years learning from these people. But to get back to what I'm telling you, which may apply to the general audience, Hoffa wrote a book years later, a popular book, about, uh, I don't know what it was, Blood Sugar and You. I don't know what the title was. And he talked about some of the schizophrenic patients that he was lucky enough to help with diet and nutrition. And one of them stuck in my mind forever. He said he was um, asked to treat a young woman, I think in her 20s, who was hospitalized 
because she was so severely mentally disturbed, and she was diagnosed as a schizophrenic and put in a mental hospital. So he asked the parents to tell them something about this girl. She had been fine in college, and something went wrong from the stress. She cracked up, and they put her away. They couldn't do anything for her at the time. So they he got to know them fairly well, and they told him some stories about her, and they said, you know, she seems to be better after we visit her on the weekend. She's better on the weekend. Well, he said, that's interesting. And he said, where do you go with her on the weekend? I said, well, we always go to the same place. She likes this seafood restaurant. And Hoffer, with being you know the keen chemist that he was, said, what does she eat? Does she eat the same food every week? He said, oh, she loves the fried oysters, and she loves the clams. So Hoffer knows that oysters and clams are very, very rich in zinc. And he put the girl on mega doses of zinc and on mega doses of niacin, and her, her mental health was restored. Now, you'll say well, it's, only an, it's only an anecdotal case. It's not a big enough body of uh, you know people who are sick. It's not a double-blind study. I accept all of that. I'm trained in science. I know where you're coming from. But you should look into some of the publications in these areas if you yourself or you, someone you know suffers from severe mood swings or from uh, anxiety, depression, because there are, there are ways to control it through diet and nutrition. I didn't say cure it. I said control it. I mean, there are other things that you could look into, like NAC. It's N-acetylcysteine. Sorry about that. And cysteine is an amino acid, a simple amino acid. Now, N-acetylcysteine is a modified version of cysteine, and it's been modified so that it crosses the blood-brain barrier, meaning cysteine itself as an amino acid does not cross the blood-brain barrier very readily, if at all. While N-acetylcysteine, readily available in you know nutrition stores, NAC, has now and is being used to treat depression and anxiety. It's a very tricky uh, story on, unto itself. But just remember, these are very inexpensive compared to the drug therapies that are generally prescribed for psychological illnesses. That's all I can say to you. And I'm not implying in any way that there's a magic bullet for anxiety, depression, or schizophrenia. I'm just telling you that these complicated mental uh, problems come from a variety of sources, which could include um, things such as oxidative stress, high cortisol levels, heavy metal poisoning, lack of sunlight, or even poor nutrition. I'm aware of the complex uh, story of all of these things, but it doesn't mean that I should not tell you about some things that may be of some help in this world where very little is talked about with regard to nutrition anymore. And I guess I'm a little ticked off because a study came out yesterday from hacks funded by the drug industry who said that they've discovered in Australia, these scientists discovered that all vitamins are a waste of money and that Australians spend billions of dollars a year on vitamins and it's all a bunch of you-know-what. All right, let's go back to the main topics which I know attract your attention. The first topic I did today was liberal Jews and Nazis, how Weinstein, Larry David, and Madoff destroyed the image of Jewish people. And then I asked you, which people in your ethnic heritage, Italians, blacks, Irish, or others, embarrass you the most? I then talked about the hoax called white privilege and the death of learning in America uh, and how we have to fight against these lunatics in order to save this nation. If you'd like me to do the news, I would suggest you just go to the websites to do the news better than I can do the news. Go where I go. Go to the Drudge Report. Go to some of the other websites, and that's the end of it. D.C. Rock, Clinton paid for Kremlin dirt on Trump. Now let's move on. Uh, we understand it was a hoax. When it, I'll just talk about it for a minute. When it first came out about the lie about the sex capades in Moscow, I don't have the tape. I could pull it to show you how smart I am. I know what I said. I remember it. I have a, a mind that really doesn't forget the important stuff. I forget the simple stuff. I said this is a bunch of rubbish. Why would a man like Donald Trump, who has such a beautiful wife and a bevy of women wherever he ever wanted them, before he was married or between he was married, why would he need to hire someone to do a thing like that to him, number one? And number two, why would he do it in a Russian hotel room where he knows he was being uh, videotaped? I said, the whole thing is a lie. Stop with this garbage. So it turns out that the Clintons are just like the communists were or the Nazis were in terms of smearing and debasing people. What else is new? We know who she is. That's why she lost. And I don't care how she lost. 
All I can say is good riddance to these communist vermin. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. ethnic group embarrasses you the most uh let's see i can give you a list i named a few but i mean uh, let's look at the media i can start with hollywood and go to the news media we don't have to limit it to larry david and harvey weinstein and, and bernie madoff i can go down the list i give you a nice list but i'm not going to do it i think it's time to be shamed out of the business or maybe shamed into behaving like americans instead of like the schlemiels and weasels that they are the stooges of the Democrat socialist leftist machine that they are. The stooges of the most deplorable segment of American society that they have become. Why do you think America has such contempt for the news media? If you look at what they actually do and how they behave and what they pretend to be, you'll understand why most people despise them. It's that simple. Let me play a sound bite. I think maybe that's what I want to do right now. It's almost a quarter to the hour. Would you believe it? Time just flies away with me. I don't know who to play. Bloomberg doesn't like Brexit. Representative Al Green. Oh, wait. Would the day be complete? I guess Pelosi didn't take her nutrients today because we haven't heard from her. They have not yet given her her niacin or her uh, N-acetyl cysteine for the day, I suppose. And so she hasn't yet appeared on MSNBC. But as soon as the nutrients cross her blood-brain barrier, I'm sure she'll be, ma I'm sure she'll be making a late afternoon appearance. But Maxine Waters is a woman who apparently does not need nutrients to open her mouth. And here she is again in clip eight. What would the day be like without Maxine Waters? I think that I have been extremely responsible in laying out the case for why this president should be impeached. I know that the right wing, the uh, white nationalists, all of those who are organized around this president do not like this. And people are not accustomed to a woman in particular, an African-American woman, taking this kind of leadership. How dare me uh, challenge the president of the United States? But we have never witnessed mm, a president yeah, right, right, who right. has been as right. irresponsible. Get off your high horse. Get off your high horse. Because let me tell you something, Maxine. If you were smart you dummy up and disappear before it's too late. Let me tell you what's coming, Maxine. You keep shooting off your big mouth and you keep stirring up racism and you keep hiding behind race. Let me tell you what's coming. You're pissing off so many people that some of them are going to dig up your relationship to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, your husband's banking interests, the fact that you authorized a $12 million loan to your husband's bank when you were in charge of that committee. Maxine, dummy up and shut up before it's too late. That would be my advice. And it's not based on race. It's based on intelligence. Seven.